This is a pioneering story that began in 1982 with Professor Niltone de Bordelais and the first conventional implants. In 1988, the company produced the first Osseo integrated implant in Brazil to assist in the specialization and improvement courses at the Paulista Association of Dental Surgeons and at Fundecto USP, which were the first to use the company's products. Currently, there are more than 70 course partnerships across the country at the most prestigious institutions of postgraduate education, where more than 20,000 students from Brazil and abroad have participated. This is the story of Implacil de Bordelais, a company that has produced more than 4 million implants and components over the past 36 years for thousands of patients in Brazil and abroad. With state-of-the-art technology and protocols that meet national and international certification in all its production line, Implaseal is a reference in the implant market. Highly accredited international publications from internationally renowned authors prove the superior efficacy and safety of Implaseal products. In 2012, the team of Dr. Adriano Piatelli of the University of Chieti, Italy, published an article in Quintessence International that presented Implaseal implants with the highest rate of osseo integration in the world, 92.7%. In 2014, the team of Dr. Marco Aurelio Bianchini published an article showing a survival rate of 98.3% in a five-year follow-up and the lowest incidence rate of peri-implantitis in the market. In 2016, an article by Dr. Sergio Gurk showed that Implaseal implant services and those from the world's leading company obtained the same rates of osseo integration. 2017 was the year in which a study developed at New York University was published in JOMI, indicating that the osseo integration parameters of Implaseal de Bordelais implants were comparable to Zimmer and Nobel BioCare brand implants. What does that mean to the specialist? It means they will obtain the same published results in any clinic, ensuring the predictability of efficacy and safety of the technique and product. In addition to the team of professors, Nilton, Nilton Jr., and Mario Sergio de Bordoli, the company also has a scientific board of highly regarded specialists. Services and technical support are vital, and we have our own sales team and qualified distributors to meet the client's needs, as well as clinical specialists available 24 hours a day. In total, there are more than 150 employees across 15 Brazilian states and representatives in Italy, Spain, Uruguay, Colombia, Peru, and Chile. Providing innovative products that meet the needs of all specialists in various clinical situations is one of the company's missions. With that in mind, we at Implaseal have launched exclusive products in recent years that have made our product line the most complete and innovative in the market. Combining tradition, scientific evidence, and state-of-the-art technology, Implaseal de Bordelais was considered the third preferred national brand among Brazilian implantologists, according to a survey conducted by Implant News Perio magazine in 2017, with the highest growth in the last four years among the five leading companies. Faithful to its origins, the Nilton de Bordelais Institute was created to offer immersion courses in implantology and oral rehabilitation so that we can continue to contribute and invest in the development of implantology in Brazil. Implacil de Bordelais, national leader in international scientific evidence and technological innovation.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you all this afternoon here with us in this first virtual uh, roundtable that Implacil is uh, bringing to you. For those who don't know, Implacil has over 30, 38 years of experience. Uh, it's a modern company that uses the latest technology and protocols suitable for international certification in knowledge production line, including FDA. The constant search for excellence in the development and manufacture of products can be scientifically translated through several clinical researches conducted by renowned specialists in neuroimplantology. Uh, today, this virtual roundtable will be an interactive event that myself, uh, José Moisés, and my colleagues, Dr. João and Ginter, uh, will bring you some information and the latest of these products. Uh, we're going to start with Dr. John, João. He will show us uh, a short keynote and he will bring some information about the uh, implant, the Maestro implant, and all of this technology. Uh, Dr. João, it's with you. Thanks, José. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be here making this first virtual round that we are doing in English. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our, our new implant. Uh, I have to talk a little bit how we, we, we get here, but the main idea is to uh, explain and show to you uh, our new implant that is uh, uh, that calls Maestro. Okay, so let's start. So um, the team that we are talking um, is the state of the art in implants and prothesis to overcome aesthetics and functional challenge. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about implants and Professor Ginter is going to go a little bit further on prosthetics. Okay, so this is our new implant Maestro. Uh, as you can see this beautiful and different macro geometry. So we, we have a lot of advantage with this uh, macro geometry. So we are thinking that this harmony of, of, of new OS integration is going to give us a, a faster rhythm, okay? So I'm going, to, I'm going to try to explain all the, all the main ideas that we have with this implant, okay? As you can see in this image, it's, it's amazing how the blood clot and the blood get stuck into the healing chambers. The main idea of this new macro geometry is the healing chambers, okay? That gives a, give us the blood and our organism to work and to make a new bone formation faster and with a, be a better quality of bone, okay? So just a, a faster intro. Um, uh, Brenner Mark and Albertson already in 1981, they show us that uh, OS integration is real and it happens and they have like 400 patients with a follow-up of 15 years. So this is eight, in 81. So as you can see, it's a long path, okay? And inside this path, we, we get into a cylindrical implant with uh, exter external hexagon, then a hybrid that is conical with tapered, and then a conical tapered implant, okay? So this was a long path until we got here, until we got to our um, Morse cone, our tapered Morse that is called Duecone. Guys, this implant is already um, beautiful. It's it's perfect, has a perfect angle. And after that, we thought like how we can get better. So we get into the Maestro implant, okay? 
please, Ginter and Jose, if you want to say something, sure. let's chat here because no problem. It's going to be more. So the literary, the literary of 21th century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. This is Alvin Toffler. It's something that I think a lot. So even, even when we got to do a con, our separate mores, we have to, even that we have to continue learning and um, checking if we can go further, okay? To improve, so right. A, uh, sorry? Always improving. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Always trying to get the, the better material or the excellent um, cases or implants anyway. This is a beautiful image uh, with the Duecon on the right and the Maestro on the left. And you can see um, the blood inside the healing chambers of the Maestro. And in the Duecon, we have the healing chambers uh, in between the, the rest is uh, the, um, the phrases. But the thing is that we don't have the perpendicular ones and we have just oh. horizontal ones. So this John. is the main idea. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this this picture is perfect to show people uh, how hydrophilic is my astral implant. Yeah, this 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 picture is perfect. Yeah, that's it. It's, yeah, you, you 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 don't need any explanation. It's only look and feel the hydrophilic. Yeah, because in the Duicon, the blood is just beside, between the spirals and the maestro is all over. It's, it's just the thing that you are saying is just the image. I don't need to talk a lot, of, uh, a lot more. Yeah. So we may presume that it will be a faster healing because of yes. this greater contact with blood. Of course, I'm, I'm going to explain uh, for, uh, further, but we, uh, we give us our body more space to work more space to, to the blood goes in, more uh, less necros in the bone, le less um, inflammation. So it's, every, it's every, every, everything combined. Um, this is just our key uh, to put the implant. It's one millimeter in the first line, two, three, and four. Um, this is just to show you guys that um, Duecon and Maestro, Besides the macro geometry is the same, the same thing, okay? The platform switching, the inside uh, Morse angle, the double ceiling, the, uh, the truly tapered angle um, on the tip, okay? The only thing that we have different, differently is the healing, healing chambers, okay? Sure. And this is also, the, and also uh, it's good for those who like uh, prosthesis that, in, uh, no matter the, the size, the diameter of the implant, that, that shape, that uh, the inside part of the implant is the same, no matter the size of the implant. Yeah. So it's easier for those who make the prosthesis as well. Yeah, it's the same. It's, it's really easy. It's really easy. The thing, with the things that we have in to, like today, uh, with the ideality that Ginter is going to talk about, is, is, is making our life really easy. Okay, this is my the image I just want to show here the double the ceiling the first ceiling because this is really important we you can almost you can't almost see the line this is the the main idea we um this make the bacteria harder to get into the implant so and the the frequency make make the abutment more more um, stable so you're not you're not going to lose the implant. You're not going to lose the the everything that goes with the abutment and inside the implant. Better a better stability between the implant and the abutment. Yeah, that's right. And you're not going to lose the screw because sometimes if you don't have this ceiling really together like that, um, and you have micro movements, you can lose the screw. Okay. So main features, uh, the main idea that I want to show to you guys is just the difference between Maestro and Duecon, because the rest is everything equal to Duecon. So the advantage is, is the macro geometry with the healing chambers. 
uh, that accelerates and improves uh, improves the os integration and low compression of both bone tissue during the implant insertion why is that uh, because of the healing chamber um, you, you have less um, beak you have less bone implant contact and this is not a problem uh, this is this doesn't going to make my uh, primary stability lower uh, this low compression is just uh, the space that we are giving to the to, to the bone works to the blood cells goes into the implant and makes a faster os integration a fast bone and a bone with more quality and a better not just yeah. faster but better right that's it um i'm going to have Sure. Uh, people have people has to know that uh, with these healing chambers when the implant is in contact with bone in the first the first phase of us integration uh, we have less micro cracks into the bone so this is this is the key to foster us integration that's it we have less um, compression in the bone so with no. that we have Inflam less inflammation uh, less, less process. micro cracks we have yeah. a yeah we have less less compression that's it so then we are going to have a faster bone formation and a better quality of bone and i think that the um, the best thing that we have with maestro besides duricon because we in at duricon we can do immediate and late loading that is immediate in the in the time of the surgery and late after six four months but with maestro we can do early loading that is with one month two months we can start open the implant and put in and put in the prosthesis on the only thing that we have to um, learn and have in mind is that um, the how you put the implant the newtons that we put you put the implant is a little bit different like immediate you have to may uh, put the implant with 35 neurons norm like any implant the early one you you can already put with 30 25 you're safe and the late loading after four six months you can put with 20 newtons it's already perfect oh joan is going to get really soft it's okay it's the idea okay it's the idea if you're going to open lately there is no problem so it's a it's better for the healing when the insertion torque is lower when we are not trying to achieve the immediate loading. Yeah, me, um, if you if you are doing a early, uh, late loading, it's not immediately or early. You can put with twenty neurons. No problem. No right. problem. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is a video of a new drill that we have. Three point zero. Three point zero. The implant is three point five. So we, you, uh, we use that drill in ma maxilla uh, type three and four, that is more a bone more soft. So you, you have to do like this sub drilling to the implant um, getting a little bit more tight. It's not that much, but if you- Just for you're, primary stability, for a good and, primary stability. And with soft bone, and if you wanna do early and immediate loading, okay? This is the drill, bone three or four, type of bone. The initial drill, 2.0. The new one, 3.0, that we make for the maestro implant. And then the implant two, mil two millimeters above the bone surface. Okay, so this is a, a faster, a fast case that I'm going to show you guys. I, I uh, removed the element twenty four. The the uh, the first premolar, the first premolar, and um, immediate implant. This is a beautiful image. How um, you can see yeah. again, like Ginter said, the hydrophilic, the blood, the blood go is going into the the healing chambers. And, and it's good to, to just. I'm sorry, John. It's good no to problem. know so people that 
can know uh, that the surface treatment of these two implants are the same. The yeah. Maestro and Draconi, it's not a difference between the surface treatments, just no. the macro geometry that makes the bloody flows difference in between these two implants. That's perfect. That's perfect. The, the, treat, the surface treatment is the same. The only difference is the macro geometry, okay? Everything is the same. Yeah. Like I said, everything is just the micro geometry that is the different things, the, the new one. And this is uh, something that I want to show that is really good in our material and our, our drills. That is the sh so, uh, ultra sharp. Um, it's uh, a drill that we, you can correct angle. And um, I mean, if you have a thin bone and you think that after the, the last drill is going to break or something you can go you can change a little bit the way of the first drill so you can see the difference of this this hole here and this one and the, and it's and it's good to use this one because it cuts laterally yeah just laterally the, green... yeah you can do it like you know, to um make a better position for the implant correcting the last drill with this one that's it. It's not going to cut in the tip. It's just on the side. Another implant, another maestro. 30 newtons on the track, two millimeters below. Subcrestal, yes. Subcrestal. And that's it. Healing caps. Sorry? Healing caps, place yep. with healing caps, and you can see that I didn't put graft on the left one because yeah. it's a it was a small is what a small gap and like I said I want to I want to give the implant I want to give the bone space to work and how uh, how we have this macro geometry of maestro you can do this blindly like. Go and Joao, Ju sorry, yeah. Why did you, why did you place the healing caps instead of the cover screws? Because for me, um, I feel more which safe. Is, which, which is the biggest advantage of placing healing caps instead of cover screws? Uh, I think we have uh, I think we have a lot um, um, in Maestro, particularly we have more because first. Uh, the healing caps you're go you're you're going to make the soft tissue already done like ready with the healing um just Up waiting for the yeah with just waiting for the prosthesis okay and another thing is that um maestro is too i like to put little um really uh, below the crest so two millimeters three millimeters it's fine so if if you don't put the um, if you just if you just put the cover, you have um, sometimes it grows bone um, up to the cover. It's Even if, yeah. yeah, and you have to find you have to take it out bone. So I like this, I like to do this this type this type of technique as well, doing the using the the healing screws when I have a good stability uh, of the implants, and when the patient doesn't use a removable provisional prosthesis. Yeah. That's, that's uh, the point. That's the point that we have to make sure that he doesn't use anything that is removable and that will touch the, the healing. But yeah, besides, no. that, besides that, I, I like to do this type of technique of, as well. Yeah, you, you can have nothing like uh, healing the, the, heal, the heel screw. So yeah, I love, to do, I love to put always healing screws, always, because sometimes I, I, I found a lot of bone up to the cover, so you have more work to do after that. Sure. This is another picture that I want to show. This one and uh, this one and that one. That Maestro is amazing also to aesthetics area, like I said, to immediate loading and to guide surgery, okay? So we don't have any restriction to Maestro implant. The only thing that we have as restrictions is the same restriction that we have to any taper morse implant that is the that is the like the 
length or the height the heights the height of the input yes the height to put the prosthesis right if you have the height you you're ready uh, you're good to go so the thing that that i was asking like how to be better okay how to get better after the duicon so we get the macro geometry John, John, can you go back one slide please yeah of course this one when, when yes no doesn't matter uh, when you talk about the the height to the prosthesis uh, you talk about the interocclusion space yes yeah right okay so i think it's more clear to talk about interocclusion space so the only disadvantage of this implant is when the patient doesn't have enough you interocclusion know, space. yeah to the uh, to put the prosthesis or to put yeah. like the particularly length of abutment with the prosthesis is uh, anyway yeah. okay so the healing chambers is what we found to get better. Um, so what's the purpose of the purpose of the healing chambers? We use like three um, three pillars of os integration. Okay, basic uh, basic pillars. Decrease the implant insertion torque that we already discussed about it. Um, but this is not this is this doesn't is going to make the primary stability less like uh, worse doesn't have connection okay improved irrigation that the thing that we talk about already that is the um, we, we give us the bones uh, the bone space we give us the blood cells space to work to go into the the healing chambers to create bone and we don't give um necrosis on the bone we don't give um pressure okay and the third mm -hmm. one the boning traction of condition uh traction condition this one i love it because even when we talk uh everything that we already talk the boning traction condition is when we put when we put the bone and we put load on it um, the healing chambers is going to um, making this traction condition on the bone is going to um, give give us more stability. Okay, so when we have um, traction like that, um, we can say a healthy tra traction. We have growth. When we have um, pressure, we have absorption. So this is the main idea. Okay. If we have a healthy traction as we have with these healing chambers, we are gonna have bo bone growth. But if you have pressure, we are gonna have bone reabsorption. Okay, so this is really important. And this is this is a, a fast paper that I wanna show because already in 2003, they were checking about um, healing chamber preparation of site. So, this uh, investigate the phases of wood healing um, on its os integration with healing chambers. Okay, the B letter B is the healing chamber. So you, you can see with four days, one week, and two weeks, the cells are already growing into going into the healing chambers. A lot of cells, a lot of newborn formation, as you can see here. So. And they show with four weeks, eight weeks, and 12 weeks, okay? So this is a good paper to, to, to us to see that it's not a brand new thing. They, they couldn't think about this for a long, a long time, okay? So those integrations are relatively short in an implant that following installation yields a large contactive free surface. The, the thing that I already said, you get the bone um, space to work. Okay, and resulting uh, and the press feet and the resulting bone necrosis may also influence in the rate of os integration. The same thing that I already said that necrosis you're going to lose bone and not have a good os integration. Okay, this is a paper of my professor, my dear colleague, uh, Professor Paulo Coelho from NYU, on in 2014 that he shows us the difference between the conical and the cylindrical. Even if we, even if we do a, um, a drilling um, respecting the, 
the spirals, you have necrosis in the, the cylindrical one. Please, uh, Jose, Inter. No, no. Yeah. Okay, so that is the conical. You have the three, 3.5 drill here, and this is 3.2. So here you have necro necrosis, and here you, you have bone formation, okay? But the cylindrical that we have between the spirals, 0 0.6 and not 1.0 like conical, um, you have like a compression of the bone. Even when we do a 3.5 drilling, even when we do a 3.5 drilling, you have necrosis here. So the, you, you already start winning with the conical, okay? And if you put the healing chamber on the conical, then it's a beautiful thing. Perfect okay? combination. Yeah, that's it. So here you, you, you can compare conical with cylindrical with 3.2 drill, 3.2 millimeters drill. Um, in the conical, it's a little bit better, but you can see that with 3.5, it's a lot better. And the cylindrical, even with 3.5, you can see a soft tissue here. You can see necrosis. So, so this that's, is that's the reason why we shouldn't uh, place the implant with a high insertion torque. That's it. You, that's you have a lot of um, necrosis. That's the main the target perfect. is that as less uh, the high insertion torque, you, let, you have less uh, necrosis, right? Yeah, that's perfect. We have papers, um, a lot of scientific works that said that more than three, uh, 35 neurons, you are making pressure on the bone and you, you have like the chance to broke some screws to have mi micro, uh, micro fractures above 35 neurons. Yeah, okay. yeah Joao, Sorry. Joao, yeah, I, think, I think this is really important to say because I can see nowadays, I, I, for me, it's, it's whoa, I, 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 have, I have no words to say that, but professors in Brazil and around the world, they still use, uh, they still use high insertion torque. For yeah. me, this is incredible. Like a victory, right? 60 yeah. newtons, yes, 80 yeah. newtons, yes. Yeah, in, yeah. My, in my opinion, when it starts going 40 or more, I prefer to unscrew and then prepare the- Drill a little bit more. Socket again, yeah, the surgical socket again and then go on. Then Perfect. this is very important to say, this is very modern. Yeah. Is the thing that I said in the beginning. You, you you have to learn and sometimes relearn. When I was young, I, I remember my dad saying like, "Whoa, I put this implant 60. I want to see somebody took this out with 60 neuron." And that's the thing. You have to sometimes with the studies and everything else. You see that it's not the. You have to change. You know. Yeah, but yeah. it just shouldn't be mistaken like. You cannot lose the uh, initial uh, stability, primary stability. You cannot uh, place your implant and it's loose inside the socket. That's not what we are saying, right? It cannot be loose. It needs to have primary stability, but it doesn't yeah. need to be a 70 newtons uh, primary stability. This no, is it needs to be tight. Okay. Yes. It's not a consequence, like, it's not that you're going to put with 35 that you're not going to have primary stability. That's the thing that I want to say. And we, we are going to show a paper that shows that. Um, if you if you goes into with 30 and 35, um, that's, not, uh, you're, that's not a consequence that you're not going to have primary stability. So this is another faster case, um, a bone block, and again, the hydrophilic image, um, insertion of the implant and the parallelism, the parallel. Subcrestal, always sub subcrestal. Always, always, always. At least two millimeters. Yeah. So uh, some evidence that we have about Maestro himself, okay? Um, this is a Marcio Casati works, a uh, great friend, a uh, professor here from Universidade, of, Universidade Paulista. 
he did two experiments, okay, the, uh, the first one to impact the new microgeometry on per implanted repair process. And the second, the same thing, but in diabetes patients. The second one is beautiful because in diabetes, we have a lot of problems of healing of, and blood clot. And he shows that Maestro can work with that. Okay, the first one, uh, the test group was Maestro and the control group was Dwecon, 30 days. You can see the torque out was huge between them, okay? Um, we uh, represent statically, statically significant, significant. And um, the second one that I said about diabetes, diabetes uh, chronic hyperglycemia, that is a huge risk factor for implants. And um, with this beautiful hydrophilic and healing chambers, we can have this torque out in diabetics uh, patients. So it would put in mouse tibias and um, the 15 mouse uh, was submitted to di diabetes, the diabetes and aiding healthy animals. So, and we can see that even that, the torque out with the Maestro one, uh, the healthy one was with Tuicon, okay? The torque out with the Maestro one in the, in the diabetes rats was higher than with the healthy animals with represent static significance. So this is amazing. This is amazing actually. Um, this one, I wanna talk a little bit because was the first page of a huge journal, okay? And, uh, and Maestro was in the first page, okay? This is a paper of, cover. yeah, in the cover. This is a paper of Professor Sergio Gerk from Uruguay that this one that he shows the stability, the primary stability of the implant, even with the less, a uh, less torque, a uh, less neurons, okay? So was put in on a block and within the limitation of this present study, um, the new implant, the new macrogeometry present low insertion torque, okay? The thing that we said, without affecting the implant stability conscience. Or say, uh, uh, um, that's it, the thing that we were discussing about. Um, even with the low insertion torque, we don't lose stability, okay? The primary stability. So the insertion torque and the e ISQ values did not uh, differ in, in relation to surface treatment on the test implant. Finally, no cor correlation was found between the insertion torque and the implant stability quotient values measured. So this is amazing. This, this answer all the things that we were, were discuss, discussing about it. Okay. And um, the last paper that I want to show, it's a paper that I did with my dear colleagues in New York and NYU with Lucas Vitek, Paulo Coelho, that we had this beautiful image with Maestro. This was in hip, ship hips, okay. Uh, Maestro and Duicon. Um, this, uh, just to say this work, this paper is not done. Okay, so it's, it's in the middle. We, ha we have, it's a huge paper, it's a huge work. So we have some results now that I wanna show because they were- So really you, compared, you compared Maestro and With, Duicon? Yeah, we did all, everything. We did uh, torque out, we did beacon buffo, and now we are measuring um, the quality of the bone. Okay, I'm going to explain a little bit. And João, and João, what about the bone to implant contact, the difference between Maestro and the old design? Yeah, I'm gonna show It's the next slide, the, the beak, right? I'm gonna show yeah. first this one is a torque out. You can see the new design is Maestro, the old design is Duecon. You can see the three with three weeks and C weeks was higher. Um, much higher, okay. Now um, showing the thing that um, uh, Ginter asked, the bone implant contact, okay. That's really important because you can see that the Duecon was higher 
with six weeks. Is the thing that we were talking about. Sometimes when we put the implant more soft, um, the the beak is going to be lower. Okay, doesn't it, it doesn't said that you're not going to have primary stability or you're not going to have a good os integration. Okay, the bone implant contact is going to be lower because the healing chambers and because you're going to insert the implant more softly. Okay. Yeah, just not the, the thread, uh, also because of the threads and the design of the threads, it will also help with the, along with the healing chambers, right? Yeah, of course, of course. And you have, and you give you more space to the bone. But this is the thing that I want to show you guys. Bafo is bone area frequen frequency occupancy. It's the quantity of bone that you have inside the healing chamber between the spirals, okay? And... I was talking, I was discussing with Paula, like, oh, the Duicon was higher. How this is, how that is possible? Because the bone implant contact, we can imagine because of the healing chamber, but bone area frequency occupancy um, was not supposed to get this lower between the Duicon. But that, then we saw that it, the, this is why we are checking the, the bone quality. Um, we, st we are studying that because it's easy for me to put an implant with 60 neurons, really tight. Of course, that is going to have more bone in the area, but you have to check if the quality of this bone, if this is a good bone, bone if it has a lot of cells, if it has trabecular bone, not, not just a, like hard bone. So everything matters. It's not just a single graph that you have to see. The quality of the bone, the quality of the bone formation that we are having inside this area, it's really important. And I and I can I can guarantee guarantee you that Duicon, uh, Duicon, and um, Maestro, sorry, has a better bone inside the area that we are talking about. Okay. So this is the histo histological Im image. As you can see, both has a good quantity of bone inside the chambers with six weeks, but you can see the cells formation in my asteroid, the, how the quality the bone, the, of the bone is better. Okay, so nice, nice. after that, um, these great guys, Steve Jobs always said that be a yardstick of quality. Some people aren't used to envir environment where excellence is expect expected. So I think this resume everything. It's a summary of everything that um, we are ready. We are waiting for something better. Yeah, and always uh, this research. They are um, uh, they're, they're really important to make sure that we are using uh, great products that we have good implants and that they work really well, that they have good uh, stability, good beak, baffle, and also, and now that they heal fast, right? Because of the hydrophilic uh, quality. And we, yeah. have, we can use it safely on a early load. So this is uh, the most challenging thing of the implants and something that most, um, most uh, oral implantologists, maybe they always thought that the, the reason for a higher um, or a better or faster uh, os integration was just related to the surface treatment. And throughout your keynote, you never mentioned the difference between them. So it's a new way to think about the... Um, that's it. The, 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 the os integration, not just related to the, the, the surface treatment, but as well with the macro geometry of the implants. Yeah, because um, three years ago, five years ago, we talk, talked about a lot about um, surface treatment. So this is a new, a new area, a new way to think, you know? Yes. And, this uh, that uh, it was uh, what, what, what we were talking about. Like um, you have to learn, relearn, and always try to get uh, to expect excellency. So you, you cannot stop. Always. You cannot stop. João, João, 
Yeah. I think people that are listening to, to your lecture, that were listening, they may think that this implant is not indicated for immediate implants with immediate loading. What do you think about using Maestro for immediate loading? Uh, As you I said, can... that the primary stability is not as higher as the old implants. What do you what do you what do you have to say? No, it's perfect. Um, like here in the summary, uh, here the third line is immediately early and late loading. You can use mm -hmm. in, at all all of cases. The only thing that you have to make sure is the the torque. Okay, if you're going to do an immediate loading. Just go with a higher torque, not higher than 35. 35 is perfect, okay? With 35 neurons, you can do an immediate loading normally. You can compensate with a sub-drilling. You can yeah. do less drilling or... 3.0 drill that I show. Or doesn't use the, the, the whole length of the drill and in, in order to achieve this higher stability when you are um, trying to, to get this immediate loading. That's it. That's it. Um, like um, if I if I put like three points, most important are the healing chambers, of course, the higher os integration. That is uh, an answer of the better better quality of the regression, the pressure, the lower pressure, everything that we discussed, and that we can have immediately early and late loading. That's it. I have. Uh... I'm really comfortable to, to, to say something about this implant, the Maestro, because uh, I've been using like for the last two, three months. And it's a really, really a good implant to, to, to install, to place, because um, especially using this 3.0 drill and, and uh, thin, thin bones where you don't have too much place to make a mistake, uh, it's really, really easy to use it because, and it's easy to achieve this stability. And That's it. There is no, there is no problem using it in any kind of bone. Another thing yeah. that um, Ginter, I want to like add the thing that we are talking about the the torque and the neurons that I didn't say is the um, condition of um, tracking tracking of the bone that I said. Uh, this gives us more primary stability. The healing chamber, when it's stick to the bone, gives us more stability, uh, primary stability. So this helps also um, at primary stability, even with a lower torque. Okay, so this this. So what, what, what might be the next uh, um, features for this implant? Maybe a new or a better surface treatment or something like that? What do you think, Juan? Um, I think the, the future is gonna be as if, um, I, I don't know if that's possible, but I, I think yes, because I already saw some work works on it. But I think that the next step, step is uh, a better, uh, a better uh, surface treatment, of course. In, uh, to improve, inside to this microgeometry, yeah, to improve. So this is the thing that I was saying, tra traction condition, the bonding traction condition, okay? So this helps a lot in the primary stability, a lot, because the, the healing chamber gives us edges, pointing edges. So this is going to get, uh, make the implants more st stuck, uh, more, more tight, um, not more tight, more, um, stuck into the, the bone. Stable. Yeah, more stable. So... Cool. Nice. So, so we had a really good idea with your lecture, with your keynote presentation about the, these Maestro implants. So let's discuss about it or Ginter, you want to get into yours? Ginter, why don't you uh, show us more of your work and especially those um, um, you also the receive it, the price yes the, the prices price. that you receive it when we were doing those researches using the the implacil implants yes sure well i have to say that my relation with 
in Placeu with the company started seven years later, seven years ago. And everything started with data collection at the University of Sao Paulo in 2013. And fortunately, three years later, we had a publication in which we published in the clinical oral implants research. It was a huge pleasure because dur during the year of 2013, we went to Sao Paulo to collect data, me and a friend from Federal University of Santa Catarina. And everything was mentored by Marco Bianchini, that was my mentor at that, at that time. And the history had a really, really happy end uh, two years ago when we received an award from the American Academy of Periodontology during a Congress in Vancouver, Canada. We went there. It, uh, you can look in the right hand side of my slide and received the prize uh, from the hands of the president of the Academy. And it was a huge honor for us, of course. We are not expecting it, this, of course not. But it was a mission very well accomplished, in my opinion. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I will talk about the, the, the one the, of the first the groups work. in Brazil. Jo again, I'm sorry. Uh, it's fantastic work from all the group, and it is especially for a group of uh, Brazilian, uh, 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 a Brazilian uh, made study that made all of this success that it was one of the most cited uh, papers of the of that year, right? Yes, it was. And uh, I will talk about the paper a little bit, uh, about the work also. Yeah, uh, we collected data in Sao Paulo, as I told you before, and we were looking for to some risk indicators of perimplant disease, more specifically perimplantitis. And at that time, we considered uh, an implant with perimplantitis when it presented bleeding on probing, bone loss uh, at the x-ray more than two, two millimeters and probing that more than five millimeters. So the implant had to present these three issues to be considered as sick, okay? And what we found, it's very interesting because we found a survival rate of 98.3%. So of the 900 implants, 98.3 was, they were working really well, okay? The prevalence of perimplantitis was 16.4% when we considered the, the person as a unit analysis, right? And 7.3% when we used the implant as unit analysis, right? Important to mention that at that time, we collected data only from internal hexagon implants and external hexagon implants. More separate implants were not included. So people who do not believe in external hags and internal hags, they have to believe because they worked really, 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 really well. We evaluated data from implants placed 20 years ago, and then they were working perfectly. And if we, I, I shared this slide because if we compare with a publication that was published one year before of ours from a German group, a very reliable German group, we can see that we had a slight prevalence of perpetitis when we analyzed Brazilian implants comparing to the Germans. But when the individual or the subject was used at, as analysis, unit of analysis, they had slight, slightly lower values. So but pretty similar results, pretty is similar. Almost the same. Yeah, pretty similar. So it was, it let us really happy because 
this time we put Implacil as a worldwide uh, reliable company. This paper put, I'm sure. Uh, Ginter. Because people, uh, people in Switzerland, they were, they were reading a, a clinical RNA for research and they saw Implacil, oh, it works perfectly. Very, how can I say, implants placed 20 years ago when they were, they were working perfectly. So in my humble opinion, this paper put Implacil in the world the map. market it was a reliable map. company. Yeah. World yes. map of implants. Yeah. Oh, Ginter, and... um, what do you have to say about um, the uh, inside perimplantitis, okay, between mm -hmm. the uh, age internal hexagonal hexagon implants comparing with the tapered mores? Because the tapered mores, tapered mores, theoretically, it's uh, below the crystal bone, so you have, um, you can like, protect more from bacteria. You have the, uh, you think the perimplantitis is going to have, uh, can happen in the same way in both implants? Yeah, before, João, before answering your question, I have to show you what we found uh, as risk indicators of perimplantitis. Okay. okay. We found that cemented restorations, patients who use Cemented restorations, they are more, more prone to develop perimplantitis, right? Because mm -hmm. usually you don't have, you don't control the excess of the cement when you place the, the crown. For, uh, patients that have, they had uh, a history of periodontitis, they are more prone. And patients who were full rehabilitations, they are more prone. So these three types of patients, we, we as surgeons we, and prosthodontics, we, know, we have to let them aware that they have something that may foster risk. the development of the disease, all right? And fortunately, in our paper, we did not find any correlation with the, the implant itself. So... It, External or internal hexag doesn't matter. Eh? The, the, the problem is the patient. The patient's profile is much more a problem than the type of the connection. Yeah, more, it's more related to the type of the prosthesis than the implant in itself. Sure, sure. We did not find any correlation with the implant company, if external or internal hex. All right? So, I can, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I can answer your question. What, what is better, more but you separate don't, or... You don't think that the implant is more protect inside the bone because each um, hexagonal, internal and external, uh, you put in the le bone level, right? And the taper mores you put yeah. below. So you don't think that is going to, uh, because of that, you're going to protect a little bit more uh, the tapered more implants from perimplantitis? Yes, of course, tapered more implants, they accumulate less plague, of course. If you place them correctly, if you choose uh, the correct size of abutment, yep. that's very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. And of course, they will have less plaque accumulation. I know that they they has they have less micro movement, or sometimes they don't have micro movement. So platform switching. Yes, the perfect the perfect publication. Uh, I I hope we can do this type of publication one day. Is to compare both uh, in a randomized clinical trial. Comparing internal, external hacks versus more Mostly. separate. It would perfect. be the perfect study, but not sure. But it's there's no doubt that more separate implant works uh, biologically much better than internal and external. There's no doubt. That's not the question. But, but I cannot think... answer which is which one is better according to the prevalence of perimplantitis. 
Yeah, but one thing that needs to be clear is that the, no matter what type of connection you're using, the most important is that you place really well the implant. You can yeah, have sure. the best implant in the world, but you cannot use it correctly. It doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah, and yeah. also and also the way you re, you do the, the the restoration of this implant is also really important. Yes. Yeah. So these are the we, main we can, we, goals. Like you have to yes. build to build a perfect case, starting with the type of implant, the way that it's placed, and finalizing with the the prosthesis. We can never forget. Jose, that uh, the implant is something prosthetic driven, okay? So it's, it's a titanium device that you have to play in a prosthetic perfect position. Yeah. So yeah, you have, first you have to plan according to the final restoration position, then you do the surgery. The surgery is, a, is an easy step. If you have the correct material, the right company, reliable company that supports science, you have good results. Since you know that you are placing something prosthetic driven. Right? Respecting the um, biological area, of course, always. Sure. Uh, uh, respecting sure. the prosthetic position, always, yeah. always. You, uh, when, when we were collecting data for the publication, we could see that a usual mistake that was done by surgeons that were starting their lives in implantology was in full rehabilitation, okay, in which they placed the implants too close to each other. So that, that's, that's, the, that's the most, uh, the primary mistake because the patient won't be able to clean. And if the patient cannot clean, doesn't matter if it's internal, external, or yeah. more separate. All right. So you have to have in mind that you are placing something prosthetic driven and you have to ensure, the, you have to be sure that the patient will be able to clean this crown or this bridge or this full bridge, all right? That's the, more, the most important. And identifying risk indicators is much more, is, is also very important because you are talking to the patient that he is someone that needs to be closer to us, to, uh, and we, we, do, we should do shorter intervals follow-up visits for them. Think about it. A patient that with history of periodontitis that has cemented restoration and a full rehabilitation. This patient needs to join a follow-up visit with shorter interval comparing to the healthy one, all right? So that's, that, that's the key message that this paper brought to us. And that's the reason the, this paper is highly cited in the literature. Yeah, it's really great because uh, implantology is bringing back old uh, concepts from periodontology. Like when, do you sh when should you uh, ask your patient to come back in the office? It depends. It depends on how well he cleans, it depends on how much prosthetic uh, prosthesis he has, and if he has diabetes, if he has like um, difficulty to hygiene, so in the oral implantology is the same. Sure. Yeah, we, we have to identify the patient's profile firstly, then we should go on. All right. Okay. I have this, uh, this, this is another paper that I love to bring you because it's, it was published last year, 2019. Uh, it was conducted by my Austrian mentor. Yeah, the first one that I show you was conducted by my Brazilian mentor, Professor Marco Bianchini. And this one was conducted in Vienna, Austria, by my Austrian mentor, Professor Gruber from Vienna. And this paper 
this in vitro paper, this is a base, this is basic research and basic research is very valuable. Uh, nowadays, we know that basic research will save lives after we can, after we identify some vaccine to the virus. Yeah. I hope people we hope. pay more attention. I hope people pay more attention to basic research nowadays. <laughs> so this paper was published last year by the, by the team, by the Austrian team in which there was a person from Chile. I hope someone from Chile is watching us. Uh, Franz Josef Strauss, the first author, he's from Chile. Uh, from Brazil, Luisa Matos, me, from Switzerland, Alexandra, and so on. This paper uh, was supported by Implacil, of course, and it left us really happy because in Placil is not interest only in developing materials. They are also supporting in vitro research that is very important, especially to answer molecular and cellular questions. Okay. And this paper was in, in this paper, titanium discs from in Placil were used. All right. And the key message from this paper was that everybody knows that OS integration is crucial for implantology, of course. And OS integration is when you have a primary stability and this primary stability turns into a secondary stability, all right? Then we have OS integration. OS yeah. integration is secondary stability, all right? But very, very, very less, less, less is known about how the OS integration process begins. It's, it's very, very, very rare to see in the literature uh, a paper describing how it starts, but it, it has to start. All right, do you agree? Yeah. And this sure. paper showed us some first insights that the acid medium after we drill the, the socket, to receive the implant, the, this acid medium that is, how can I say, that is made by the osteoclasts. Osteoclasts, they work in acid medium, all right? So this acid medium in contact with titanium, all right? It will make, probably will make the kickoff for os integration. So they, 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 they found that TGF beta, that is a growth factor in contact with this, the titanium surface. Yes. After the osteoclasts, they let the, 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 the environment very acid. This maybe is the kickoff for the process of os integration. So this, is, this, this was the first paper to describe it. So um, I think a company to be solid, to be reliable, of course, it has to develop materials, really implants, beautiful implants, abutments. very beautiful abutments that we will talk later. Of course it has, but it also has to support biology. It has to support how it works biologically. James. So yes, that's the point. That's the point. Everything starts with a bone to implant contact. And everybody is, is happy uh, after achieving OS integration, but it's, it's very strange because we don't know how, how, it, how it is the kickoff for the OS integration. So this paper shows, is a part of the puzzle, like Professor Gruber lo loves to say, is a part of the puzzle of, on how OS integration begins. Yeah, oh. and I, I think that this subject is amazing, actually. And uh, I can add something because this bone divided TGF beta, um, we have a work about Maestro uh, uh, from Marcio Caza Professor Marcio Casati that shows a lot of bone uh, derived um, cells like TGF. And uh, in that paper, he shows that osteopontin, that is a, a big one for bone formation uh, yeah. has a lot of quantity 
in the histology that he did and around the implant. So it's the thing that you're saying, um, we have to learn, we have to check, we have to see how this works better to understand well the OS integration. Yeah, and a paper like this make, makes the company much more solid because we know that the implant works really well. But if we, we go there studying basic research and we see, oh, Implacil is supporting this. Oh, nice, really nice. So they are, they're, they're, looking, they're looking really for the development of something biologically different. Yeah. They are acting all around the world. And this partnership with Vienna is, makes part of it. All right? So that, I really, I'm really happy that this paper was published and we could see Implacil as the main supporter. All right? All right. Yeah. So let's, I will, work, I will show you now and I will discuss with you a paper that, uh, the clinical case, in fact, that was conducted here in Florianópolis, Brazil, south of Brazil at Unisu University. So it's a patient from the university, all right? And this is the first picture I, this first picture I love to show you because this is how I begin my, my planning, my treatment plan. I always like to do a first picture of the patient and I ask him, her to smile, of course. Then we can see the lip line. The lip line plays a key role during rehabilitation, of course, even more in the aesthetic area. Aesthetic, right. Yeah, this patient, she, had, she, she fell from a bike and she broke the 22 and the 23, the lateral incisor and the canine, all right? You can see the CBCT scans and then you can see the red line showing the longitudinal fracture of both teeth, all right? So they were, they were lost. She, she went to the clinic crying. She was, she was very suffering from, she was suffering from pain. And this, this picture, besides showing the position of the fracture, I can see two very important, it brings me two very important information, all right? First, first one, the thickness of the, bu the buccal bone, all right? I can see in both situations, lateral incisor and canine, that we have a thickness of more than one millimeter. All right? This is the first very valuable information. The second one is about the root position in the socket, in the osseous housing, like Professor Josef Kahn loves to say. Let's see why this is so important. Here you can see again, the lateral and the canine, all right? And in the right, the right hand side, you can see the classification of Professor Kahn. Class one, two, three, and four. Class one, he defined it as a tooth in which the root is very close to the buccal bone. Class two, the root is in the middle of the osseous housing, right in the middle, all right? Mm -hmm. Class three, the root is more palatal, as you can see. In class four, we have a root bigger than the osseous housing. You don't have bone. When we're, yeah, you don't have bone. You can, you, you, it's really, really, it's almost impossible to do an immediate implant in class four unless you have a very uh, ultra, a ultra thin implant like the Sling implant Sling. from implant school. And you still, you have to have bone apical, apically to the, the roots. The, root. the primary stability. Yeah. Same primary stability, yes, of course. This case was planned in 2017. 2017, we did not have Maestro implant and we did not have Ideali abutments. I will show you how I rehabilitated 
this case. And as I, I, I'm a person who loves to respect biology, all right? So that's the reason I always follow Professor Scan paper according to the position, to the root position into the osseous housing. And I told the patient at that time that if we respect the, the anatomy inclination, we had to do a cemented restoration, all right? Then I told her that if you wanted to do something screwed, retain it. We had to put in this position, and at that time you had the risk to make some fenestration at the apical portion of the implant. So it was a it was a common sense that we and in, in which we opted to do something cemented retaining. All right. As but you I have a you, you have a preference between cemented and screw. I always. I always try to screw my crown. Always, always. Screw retaining. Yes, screw retaining always. But sometimes it's not possible. So at if, least, if at least I, pre I prefer, yeah, this case, this case, it was not possible in my opinion. I, uh, of course, I respect all opinions, but my opinion in this case was to cement because mm -hmm. I did, I did not want to take the risk. To expose the apical portion of the implant and so on all right so i tried to respect biology and then place the implants to cement the restoration all right at that time we had duiconi implant so we planned to place two implants more separate implant duiconi and the connection was done by an abutment called SMART. And uh, we did not have the most, the gorgeous abutment that we have nowadays. But if we have, if I had in that time, the, the abutments from the Ideali, it's called Ideali, yeah, it's in, an Italian word. I would place the implant in the same position. And uh, it's that's very important. I would respect, but instead of cementing, I would do it screwed. Oh, nice. Without, without a doubt, because I love screw retained restorations. I love. I do 90% of my cases screw retained. And if this case was done today, I would do with the Maestro implant, of course, and ideally abutments and i want to know about your opinion and what do you prefer if you screw retain it or or cemented retain it and i want to listen about you oh of course all the time uh 100 try to do the screw retain it crowns uh especially because of the retrievability and that whenever i want to remove the crown or do some kind of treatment or check something on the implant, on the abutment. I have this ability to remove it without trying to take care of the, uh, the, the cementation. And also because of the biology aspect that it has less inflammatory cells around the, the, the crowns where it's retained comparing uh, with the cemented crown. So it's better for the uh, the manufacturing in itself, uh, we don't have to to worry about the remain of the excess or the excess of cement remains inside the the, the tissue, um, and it's much better for the prosthesis as well in the the, the, the day by day of the the case. Yeah, we have we, there is a systematic review from people from Switzerland that is dated from 2014 i think and the conclusion the only conclusion about cemented versus scrutane is that oh i would choose scrutaned because of the reversibility of the restoration so 
There's no difference uh, regarding biological complications, according to this system, systematic review. But they would choose screw retained because of the reversibility. So now the, it's a great uh, feature for the company that you can do all of the cases uh, with this a screw retained abutment, even if yeah. uh, and you can do and you can do both thing here for both things here in this case. Because you because you were worried about the implant positioning, and if you would do a screw or a cemented crown, but now you uh, you don't need to worry about that. You can think them as separate aspects. Like you can place the implant in the best biological place possible, and you won't have to do a cemented crown. Like if you would do today, I'm sure you would do it different using the angled the angled uh, ideally. Yeah, and screwing the the crown. Yeah, sure. Now nowadays with Ideali, I can respect biology, and then I can happily I can screw my restoration. Everybody can. Yeah. It's very and easy to use. It's it's think, it's a golden. It's a it's golden. It is technically if you have a thin tissue, golden is an advantage. I have nice. Is an advantage, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and hybrid, then, right? You can choose to screw or cement it. So this is sure. that's perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. And and also the, the, the surface of the abutment is treated. It's anodized in yeah. order to have less more plaque adhesion, right? And a better sure. soft tissue arrangement around it. That's perfect. The only the only disadvantage in this case. Again, is the interclusion space because sometimes you don't have a spa enough space to add a screw in the case in the case of a screw retaining screw a screw a screw retaining restoration, and then you have to cement. So that's the only advantage disadvantage. Yeah, yeah. the interclusion space again. Yeah, but sometimes, especially in a case like that, that you are planning to do immediate loading, during the surgery, if necessary, you can place your implant uh, even more um, deep, deep, deeper. Deep. Sure. Sure. And compensate yes. that. Of course. Yes, that, uh, that's perfect, man. But you yeah. know what? Let me tell you. This screw that you're showing has two millimeters height. Okay? Just the screw. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they are making a new screw, the, the, the crown screw, that it will have just one millimeter height. So just like that, you gain one millimeter of yes. interocclusion space. It may look like it's nothing, but sometimes it can save the case. Sure, of course, no doubt. And João, what do you think about um about a cemented and a screwed yeah, or, what's a, what's the yeah option? for me i mean for me it's it's like it's like you nine ninety percent of the cases is screw i will i always try to uh, do a screw type uh and with the ideally the things are really easy i think it's really easy because you can choose if it's high uh, if it's cemented and screw and it's just one body the the not the angle one the normal one is just one the body straight. yeah the straight one you don't have screws to screw the abutment in the implant so this is that it's amazing actually it's it's something that is really good so i agree 100 percent with you i mean i just i just don't do screw ones when i don't have the high um of high enough to the prosthesis but yeah, it, it's amazing how you show that um, two or three years ago um, you did a cemented because we don't have the material that we have today. So this is that is really nice, really nice. Yeah, sure. Let me show you the the case, the complete case. Yeah, I always start my cases with a circular incision, of course, and try to remove the tooth as smooth as possible. All right, trying to Eco remove ecological extraction. Yes, only one direction. I I always avoid to make pendular movements. 
yeah to i i always try to to keep uh, intact the buccal bone we know that it's very thin usually it has much lesser than one millimeter so we have to we have to preserve this special structure so after the tooth left the socket we have have we always have to have in mind of course that this socket will suffer from dimension alterations of course always yeah, we know that biomaterials they won't avoid this alteration but it will compensate all right so i have to have in mind always that this socket will remodulate all right and the implant will not preserve bone yeah i'm sure that there are some there are people nowadays that still think the implant will preserve bone yeah, so that's very important to say that the implant does not preserve bone all right what preserves bone is biomaterial because the biomaterial will compensate, compensate bone yes. remo remodeling will not avoid also it will compensate all right after that we have to always evaluate the, the soft tissue biotype from the patient because if we look at this swiss publication from 2017 professor vivian chapui she she observed yes that if the patient has a thick biotype after eight weeks the vertical bone loss will be up to 1.1 millimeter all right if this the biotype is thick she it's, it's a very simple study if you look in the right hand side up upwards you have the first cbct and then you have the second one eight weeks after distraction and then you can see you still have buccal bone after eight weeks if the tissue is thick if not if if there is a thin soft tissue biotype and consequently hard tissue biotype thing also thin the vertical bone loss will be up to 7.5 millimeters Which right is common to see Yes, it's seven hundred percent more bone sure. loss, much more. So you cannot treat equally a patient who has a thin soft tissue biotype with that one that has a, a very thick soft tissue biotype. So you have to have in mind this always. So if you plan this, you will avoid some future surprises in your treatment especially in the static area after you you removed your your tooth very smoothly yeah you have to be very 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 careful this is a very the, the buccal bone is a very how can i say special structure very thin so you have to behave well with him and after the tooth left the socket i always check if the buccal bone is there or not oh, where is right? the position yes and how can i say oh there is buccal bone integrity i can go on with my case use a periodontal probe and check the distance between the gingival margin and the bone crest if the distance is three millimeters or less, you can be sure that you have bone integrity. If not, you may start thinking about some type of reconstruction, some type of membrane or, diff or a different approach, all right? But you can be sure if you, if you have a distance smaller than three millimeters, from the gingival margin to the bone crest, you can be sure that you have bone, buccal bone integrity. Then you can go on safely with your treatment. Unfortunately, uh, we were not in 2020 
at that time. It was three years ago. I had to use Duecone implant that for me works perfectly. All right, this is a more, this is a conical implant with the philosophy of platform switching. Yeah, more taper with the philosophy of platform switching philosophy, which works really well. We know that the, we have two main advantages using this philosophy of platform switching. We have a mechanical one, mechanical advantage and a biological advantage. The mechanical is that when we use a more stepper implant, we have much less uh, micro movements from the abatement. And this less micro, this less or almost nothing micro movement, it will avoid the penetration of bacteria between abutment and implant. And, and this is crucial. And also inflammation, right? Less inflammation because of the movement. And this is crucial when we think about peri-implant bone maintenance, all right? Perfect. So the mechanical advantage will bring us some biological advantage. We will avoid biological complications, all right? And the second, uh, the second advantage of the platform switching philosophy, philosophy is that we have uh, an abutment smaller than the implant platform. Or at least in the so, same size. Yeah, yeah. And we have, yes, we have an abutment smaller than the implant neck. And this will bring a, a biological advantage. Yeah. Because yeah, especially, especially when you're because, using screw retraining, there's no need to use like larger abutments. Yes. And th this, this, uh, this, 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 the, the, the fact that the, the abutment is smaller will bring us a biological advantage because we will, we have the gap between the comp, the abutment and the implant a little bit further far from the bone so the right so this is another advantage so we have a biological advantage and a mechanical advantage that will bring us less biological complications if everything works perfectly all right yep. and I, I do not listen people talking about the height, the, the, the neck height of the abutment, but this is for me also very important to, to optimize the philosophy of platform switching, all right? The correct selection of the abutment height. This is, always, this is also very, very important and we should discuss it much more yeah, I think for me that that is the most important thing because if you put three millimeters below, um, you have to put a higher abutment, but you cannot yes. put a abutment that is making pressure on the bone. So you have to respect all of that. So it's, it's I think this is the most important thing. Yeah, as, as, as we don't have much time today, uh, I would say <laughs> that I place my implant two millimeters below. The crest the crest and 90% of the cases I choose uh, the abutment height of 2.5 millimeters. At least. That's it. At least, at least. Yep. I always try to, I always try to place this uh, black line over the bone crest. Bone crest. Currently to the bone crest. I always try to do that. So if I place my implant two millimeters below, I place at least uh, an abutment with 2.5 millimeters height. Yep. All right. Of course. So that's the that's that's the picture that this is a picture that shows us the position of the implants. Perfect position to cement the the crowns, of course. Yeah. Impossible to screw retain in this case and do not have. Uh, static fader. 
After two years, you can see that the crowns were already cemented, all right? And you can see the white dots showing in the left side that we could maintain the soft tissue volume, all right? And which make us Did you use really happy. any kind of, of graft in this case? Yes. Any kind of which biomaterial? Yes, yes. Yeah. Just I, biomaterial? I always, I, I always fill the gap between the implant and the buccal bone with uh, bovine material, all right, without proteins. So inorganic, safe, bovine yeah. material, always, all right? Yeah. Because we, we, I always fill the gap because we know that this, this bone is tooth dependent, yeah? The nutrition of the bone, the buccal bone is tooth dependent. So we have to compensate this remode remodeling of this bone. And to compensate, I, I always use a bovine material without protein. So you say inorganic bovine material. All great. right. Great, great case. And especially with the, 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 the follow-up, two years follow-up. Yes, here, Jose, here you have a, a two-year CBCT follow-up in which we can see that the, the implants are a little bit more palatal. Then we could give more space to fill the gap with a bovine material. Then we had a bone growth buccally to the implant. Then, then you can, I feel comfortable to see the, when I see this image. And I'm sure that this case will be stable for a long time yeah. unless something happens. Right? Yeah. But, but, it, well, it, but it we can be perfect. sure that the chance of periplantitis in this case is really low, especially if the patient has a good history of, like, it has a good history, right? No diabetes, no um, case of uh, periodontology. So, it's, it has to be like this for a long time. It should be like this for, for a sure. long time. There is a paper from Alberto Monge from Spain in which he, he found in, it was a in vivo study in dogs, rabbits, sorry, in which he saw that 1.5 millimeter of buccal bone is very safe if something uh, pathologic happens. So in this case, we have much more than 1.5 millimeters. So I feel confident that this case will be stable for a long time. Yeah, for sure. And here we have two x-rays, the, the, the right one almost three years after. Then we can see the bone crest between the implants, very stable. A little bit, not so white, a little bit radiolucency, radial, radial yeah. But for me, it's okay. You can see okay, that. One thing, Ginter, excuse me, that it's great in this 32-month uh, evaluation is the presence of bone between the, the two implants. Like, yes. The two implants, they are close between they, between they, but even though they still have a great amount of bone between them, that will give a good stability of uh, soft tissue around the, the crowns. And the, the bone yes. is higher than the implant. In the, yes, in the, the bone. Line of the we have, we have uh, it's important to say that this case, uh, I, I installed the abutment during the implant placement, it was immediate implants with immediate immediate loading. So I placed the, the abutment and I did not remove anymore. So one abutment, one abutment at one time philosophy. That's very important. Very important. Very important. Yes. So you can you, we can see bone currently to the the, the abutment. Yeah. In this in this in this X-ray. So, so that's. Uh, 
I could imagine. I can imagine that it was not easy to remove the 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 or try to remove the the excess of cement in this type no, of restoration. Not easy. Not easy. Yeah. Not easy. So one of the great advantages of using the screw retainer, like it's much easier to perform this kind of restoration. Of I would, if in this case was it was done nowadays, of course I would choose idealic abutments. Then I could screw retain this. Restoration. Yeah, but but the, the the most important is that the, the the implants are well positioned. Some people might think that oh my gosh, you place the implant like five millimeters below the crest, but it doesn't matter. You have the the abutments to to solve this kind of case. The K9 is four millimeters below the bone crest, bone crest, and the lateral incisor is two point five. I love it to put four millimeters below. <laughs> and for me, it's yeah. A high, a higher abutment, you can respect everything. That's just beautiful, man. This is a very new concept. People yeah. has to change their minds. Yeah, it's different because people that used to place uh, external wax implant and they're gonna see this type of uh, image, they're gonna freak out because what? Are, are you yeah. placing implants this deep? Yes, sure. And very interesting, if we see the clinical image of this patient, please remember that the, she was rehabilitated in university. So she did not have too much money to money resources. use the cutting edge prosthetic materials. And we did metalloceramic restoration, all right? But please check uh, Jose and João. Please check the, the gingival margins from the lateral, central lateral canine and first premolar, baseline and three years later. Look, where are they now? I mean, it's better. It's better now. Much better. And we did not do any soft tissue nice. reconstruction, Great. right? Only, only. We chose the best material, the best implant, the best connection. And of course, the implants are in a very well, in an optimal position, of course. This is, this is basic. Implant position is basic. But sometimes we have to talk about this, the implant position. Yeah, and especially now, because we have the uh, angled abutment, the ideally. With 17 degrees of angle, you can you could do this case with a, a screw retained crown, but the important is that implant would be in the best position, biological position, and and you wouldn't have to worry about the the oh it's too buckle or you can have a fenestration and nothing like that. Yeah, great way to finish the is it? I'm sorry, the the case right it's the last. Yeah, yeah, this is the last image. Because of the time limit, constriction. Um, you can... I have, uh, to, I, have to, I have to thank Professor Marcio from Onisu because he, he did the, these two restorations for the patients. I did the nice. surgery. Nice. Perfect. Really beautiful. I just, I just want to add something about Dide Ali because... Um, it's really important to say that um, we have the straight one and the angle. Both both are um, ionized with surf surface treatment, and you can like you have you, you can choose you can choose if you can if you can uh, screw and cement it. And besides that, besides that, um, in at NYU we were doing some study uh, with Ideali, and we already have the results, but. The, the the beauty of this that is that um, the straight one when we put in fatigue normally we we broke like two abutment per day ideally the straight one we have we broke one in two days so we don't have the screw that is the thing the passing, that the passing is true deeply. yeah you screw directly the abutment is one body in the implant so that makes really strong. I mean, um, the angle one that have a screw passing through was 
uh, almost two days. It was a little bit less, one day and a half, because this is true breaks um, first. So it's it's amazing this abutment. It's really yeah, so amazing. This really this, amazing. this kind of technology gives us more uh, options to give great uh, restoration to the patients. Like we have, we, we can be safe to use a 3.5 uh, diameter implant with a 3.3 diameter abutment. And when they, are when they are together and screwed, we can make sure that it won't lose, it won't fracture the implant, that they will work together uh, like and restore the, 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 here. the case successfully. Yeah, we can show better here. Like the straight one is we don't have screw, so it's this one here. We it's don't one body. Have, yeah, you one body, and the angle one you have a screw passing through. But both have a beauty uh, resistance. It's amazing. But the straight one is like two days to break one. Normally we break two in one day. So that was amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it's it's not like. Ideally, the... go ahead, Ginte. Ideally, is the eight. Wonder of the world. <laughs> you know that I was talking to, uh, especially we. Uh, I think we have like a international uh, crowd today uh, watching us. I was talking to a friend from Spain, and I was trying to explain him about the ideally, like it's angled abutment with a screw crown, and he couldn't understand that the concept. Okay, and when where do I place the cement? No, 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 no cement at all, nowhere. So, like, it's a new concept. I mean, if you, if you want to cement, you can, but yeah, but that's but it. Uh, so, guys, I'll give you like a minute or something for your last uh, words, uh, and we will finish this interaction, this this talk, this chat. John, go ahead. Nice. Um, I want to take you, you both. Jose and Ginter, firstly, because this was amazing, actually. It's a pleasure, an honor to be here uh, at home, talking about something that we loved and uh, showing that the new stuff that we have, like ma the Maestro with Ideali is combined, is something that it's from another world. So this is, re this is really amazing. And I want to thank you, thank you all the people that are listening to us, my professors and everything from you, everybody from New York and all, o all over the world. Thank you guys. Inter? Yeah. Yeah, I have a, a very direct message for people that, that are listening. I, you have to choose a company that supports in vitro, basic, in vivo, and clinical research. That's that's it. That's the point. That this makes the company reliable. Right? Yep. Not only mm -hmm. the, the material development, they have to support all these stages until the material development. Yeah, great. And I, I'm sure I'm sure Implacil supports it. That's the reason I love to work with them. Yeah, and it gives uh, a good product. The final of the, the this this line is that dentists all over the world has, has the ability to use this great uh, product. And if they wanted research about that, we could give them any kind of research, like basic research, uh, materials research, clinical cases. And uh, I would like also to thank you, the company and everyone that has been watching us. And it's like uh, for the first time that we are giving this kind of presentation in English so that everybody around the world, around the world could uh, understand a little bit of the, the concepts and the products of the, the company. And I would like to thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for uh, João and Ginter for this pleasant time talking about these products. Thank and you. I hope to see you guys in the next time. Thank you. Bye Thank guys. you, Jose. Thank bye you. bye. Stay safe. Stay safe, everybody. <laughs>